Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about another tragic case. Sometimes reality is more chilling than any horror film, and this story captures that perfectly. Picture this. A lavish home, an ideal couple. He's a thriving businessman, she's a charming and confident woman. Their life is drenched in luxury and elegance, yet behind that polished front lurked secrets dark enough to send chills down your spine. Let me introduce you to Mike and Susan Rochel, a couple who seemed the very image of success. Yet only they knew the shadows hidden within the walls of their home. No one could have guessed that, on a cold February night, everything would come to a tragic halt. A desperate call to emergency services, followed by accusations that would send shivers down anyone's spine. As they say, the devil is in the details, and here it was those minute details, texts, casual words, red stains on the floor, that piece together a story you won't be able to look away from. Mike Rochel, a millionaire, and his wife Susan were often spotted dining at exclusive restaurants and vacationing at upscale resorts, projecting the image of a flawless marriage. Their mansion in the elite neighborhood of Naplesville, Florida, sparkled as brightly as their public persona. A well-manicured garden, a shimmering pool, and sleek, modern interiors. Everything Mike touched seemed to turn to gold, and Susan, his stunning partner, was no exception. Yet within those walls lay cracks so deep that even the finest designer couldn't hide them. Mike's business success earned him a respected name, though his personal life remained hidden in the shadows. Few knew of his past, which led back to his early days as a student at the University of Florida, where he met his first love, Dee Dee Hoffman. At just 19, Mike was already full of ambition, climbing the career ladder, while his young romance with Dee Dee turned into a marriage that lasted over 25 years. Dee Dee described him as a gentle, dependable man, never one to raise his hand or his voice. However, his relentless career drive meant long stretches away from home, leaving his family in the shadow of his work. Eventually, this led to their quiet divorce in 2005. Dee Dee moved on, but the echoes of their past lingered. Soon after, Susan stepped into his life. A young nurse whom Mike met through an online dating site, Susan was 38 and immediately caught his attention with her vibrant energy and zest for life. It wasn't long before she moved into his home, taking the place once held by Dee Dee. In August 2007, they married, and the mansion once filled with memories of his first family now belonged to a new union. Yet, on February 3rd, 2018, before dawn, the calm of their new life shattered. A frantic call to emergency services broke the silence, Mike's shaky voice reporting a break-in, an unknown intruder, masked and armed, attacking him and his wife. The police and paramedics arrived swiftly, but what they found went beyond even their darkest expectations. The yard was eerily silent, as though watching the scene unfold, while the mansion's huge windows mirrored the flashing lights casting eerie shadows. From the outside, all seemed perfect, but those close to the couple knew it was anything but. Within the marriage, Susan took a firm hand in managing their home and had a dominant influence on many parts of Mike's life. She had once worked as a nurse at a hospice, caring for severely ill patients. But after their marriage, she left that role to embrace her new responsibilities and social standing. Although Mike cut back on travel, Buying a dental clinic to stay close to her, tensions in the household grew with each passing year. Despite appearances of wealth and success, a very different story lay hidden. Mike would often tell friends he found in Susan a partner to start a new chapter with, yet his attempts to strengthen their bond were frequently met with her cold, distant demeanor. Now, as police officers moved through the mansion's hallways, documenting previously overlooked details, a troubling picture began to emerge evidence of things kept secret within those walls, things Mike never spoke of openly. Everyone was waiting for answers. Who was this masked intruder? What had drawn them to this home? And most critically, what lay behind the facade of a calm and prosperous marriage? But to understand the full depth of these tragic events, let's look back on this couple's past. By 2015, the relationship between Mike and Susan was not as picture-perfect as it appeared. 
The growing friction between Susan and Mike's daughter Caroline, especially, strained their bond. Susan often expressed her resentment of Caroline, even sending Mike heated texts accusing him of spending too much time with her. Caroline felt no warmth toward her new stepmother, seeing her as someone trying to push her out of Mike's life. Caroline also observed Susan's tendency to drink, often five or six glasses of wine or martinis in a single evening, though Susan maintained her composure. By fall 2017, the tension reached a boiling point. The final straw came as Caroline began planning her wedding, for which Mike allocated a significant budget of $100,000. Though Susan reluctantly agreed to cover the costs, the expenses soon ballooned beyond $250,000. Furious, Susan remained upset. Three weeks after the wedding in November 2017, Mike confided in Caroline, sharing how Susan had confronted him violently, even showing her photos of injuries he'd sustained. Caroline had noticed a faint scar on his cheek during the wedding, learning it was from one of Susan's attacks. When Susan discovered the true cost of Caroline's wedding, she lashed out, throwing a phone at Mike and hitting him. This shocked everyone who thought they knew the couple. Despite being the aggressor, Susan herself called the police, perhaps hoping to control the narrative. When officers arrived, they noted signs of a recent altercation, broken items, and an atmosphere of palpable tension. The officers persuaded Susan to leave the house temporarily, a request she verbally agreed to, yet she stayed, attempting to convince Mike to work things out. That evening, Mike had hoped a peaceful dinner would be a fresh start. Yet, their conversation veered into familiar arguments. He was reminded that the woman who once brought light into his life was now a source of pain. Their marriage teetered on the edge. Later that night, they argued again, but this time it turned violent. Mike, in a rage, attacked Susan with a knife. In desperation, she promised to stay to not divorce him, hoping it would make him stop. He froze, then spun a tale about a masked intruder, erasing security footage to hide his actions. However, Susan revealed the truth at the hospital. Police soon uncovered Mike's story of an intruder was fabricated. Security footage from the restaurant and the house contradicted his claims. A web of lies had been exposed and with it, the dark reality behind their seemingly perfect life unraveled. As investigators tried to unravel the truth, they quickly realized that what they'd uncovered was merely the beginning. The story Mike had framed as an isolated attack hinted at something far darker and far more complex than anyone could have predicted. Mike clung to his version of events, but the weaknesses in his account were beginning to show. While the footage showed a calm home, beneath the surface were hidden truths that no one expected to find. This unraveling was only the start of a far more disturbing twist in this case. When Mike Rowell was arrested, his first call was to his daughter. His voice, shaky yet resolved, bore a determination meant to dispel any doubt. Caroline, I didn't do anything, he insisted, his tone urgent. You have to call my lawyer. You have to get me out of here. He understood that without her support, his path to freedom would be much more difficult. Caroline wasn't just his daughter. She was his unwavering ally, the one who could protect his reputation in court and in the public eye. But all that had happened in recent weeks did not align with the image of the successful and composed businessman Mike was known to be in certain circles. News of his arrest spread like wildfire affecting not only his family but also friends, colleagues, his ex-wife Didi, and many others who had known him. Didi, who had been married to him for 25 years, was reportedly devastated. Mike was always so gentle and kind. I can't believe he'd do something like this, she stated. Friends described him as rational, calm, and steady, even during crises. Yet something had shifted in this paragon of success and stability that defied understanding. The prosecution, however, presented a different story. Their narrative described a man accustomed to complete control over his life who could not bear the idea of losing it. Unable to accept a divorce or the thought of losing the assets he'd worked hard for, Mike had been pushed to make a desperate choice. They argued that his fear of losing his fortune to Susan in the divorce drove him to attempt a final irreversible solution. It now fell to his attorneys to prove his innocence to validate that an intruder was indeed responsible, 
and that Susan's injuries were merely a tragic accident, not a premeditated act. In his first court appearance in mid-February, Mike publicly shared his account for the first time. Though he spoke sincerely, it failed to fully convince. He confirmed that he and Susan had argued that night at the restaurant, returning home separately to separate rooms. Later that chilly evening, after he'd cooled down, he decided to go to her guest room to make amends. However, when he entered, he found Susan kneeling by the bed holding a knife. According to him, she appeared desperate, and he feared she might hurt herself. Mike recounted his attempt to persuade her to drop the knife, but she refused, leading to a struggle, awkward and emotional, not violent. He described feeling the knife's edge against her abdomen and his own hand as it slipped from her grasp. She was breathing heavily, blood seeping through her clothes. He claimed it was an accident, a mere attempt to prevent her from harming herself. Yet inconsistencies were evident. That same night, Mike claimed they sat on the bed discussing plans, vacations, and their future, as if attempting to forget their injuries. It was one of the best conversations we'd had in a long time, he recalled with an almost nostalgic smile. But for most, the notion of such a conversation amid such injuries was simply implausible. Meanwhile, the investigation revealed more unsettling details. The police report noted blood not only on the bed, but also on the walls, floor, and even the bathroom mirror. Additionally, the bed bore signs of vomit and feces, and the room had an oppressive, heavy smell. Mike could offer no explanation, and these details raised further doubts, suggesting the event was far more grim than he let on. In court, Mike described another peculiar moment. When their dog leaped onto the bed, it distracted him, allowing Susan to seize the knife again and cut her wrists. She was sobbing, whispering her terror of going to jail, unsure of what to do. Knowing the police would see the footage, Mike claimed he had to act. He admitted to turning off the cameras to avoid any accusations before deciding to call emergency services and report an intruder. But his story, based on deceit, was already buckling under its contradictions. As investigators examined the footage and conducted searches, it became apparent that no intruder had entered the house. Though Mike had tried to erase sections of the recordings, some clips remained, revealing tension between him and Susan well before that fateful night. Medical experts determined that Susan's injuries were inflicted intentionally, not accidentally. The wounds were precise, not haphazard. Despite Mike's claims of protection, the facts were building a far darker picture. The notion of a masked intruder was quickly becoming a failed cover-up for a much more sinister reality. The trial continued, with both sides presenting contrasting perspectives. Mike's defense argued that he was trapped in a toxic relationship, cornered by an unstable partner. They cited Susan's prior arrests and the accusatory messages she sent to Mike as proof of her hostility. To bolster their case, they presented online forum posts where Mike spoke of his struggles in the marriage, describing constant accusations, demands, and feelings of being trapped. But Susan's legal team wasn't swayed. They posed one critical question. If Mike was truly afraid, why had he never gone to the police? Why maintain the facade of a happy marriage and fabricate an intruder story if his fears were genuine? With every hearing, the case grew more twisted. To support his account, Mike's defense brought in a forensic expert to examine the blood spatter. The expert argued that the injuries occurred closer to 3 a.m., backing up Mike's account. However, Susan claimed the attack happened around midnight while she was asleep. This point became central to the case. Medical professionals testified that someone with such severe wrist injuries could bleed out in under an hour without immediate help. Although Mike's attorneys used this to support his claim, their case was weakened when the forensic expert's credibility was shattered by revelations of past ethical violations. With every new revelation, the trial shifted direction. The defense attempted to cast Susan as the aggressor, while Susan's team argued that Mike's actions were calculated and deliberate. Evidence surfaced showing that Mike had sought out a life without Susan, connecting with others on dating sites and making plans that did not include his wife. The prosecution used this as proof that his intentions weren't as innocent as he claimed. By the end, the trial had become one of the most sensational cases in years. After only four hours, the jury delivered a verdict. Mike was found guilty of attempted manslaughter, 
evidence tampering, denying medical aid, and witness intimidation. In December 2019, he was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Mike, unprepared for the collapse of his carefully curated life, tried to appeal but was denied. His former luxury, wealth, and control now faded. He sits in a correctional facility with no hope for early release. Rumors began circulating of alleged attempts by Mike, even from behind bars, to plot against Susan, though these claims were ultimately unproven. Meanwhile, Susan, choosing privacy over publicity, filed for a swift divorce, reclaiming her life. The luxurious home that once represented their love became yet another battleground, as Susan fought for her share, determined to move forward despite the haunting memories within its walls. This case was not just a courtroom drama, but a cautionary tale of control, deception, and the irreversible cost of unchecked ambition. Both Mike and Susan paid heavy prices, one with his freedom, the other with her peace of mind. In the end, unresolved conflicts and hidden resentments tore everything apart. What would any of us have done in their shoes? The answer may forever remain in the shadows. Thanks guys for watching. If you liked the video, leave a comment and subscribe. There are many shocking cases ahead of you. Until then, stay safe.